me. Okay, so now we have with us um, Mark Halsey, who's the uh, executive producer and general manager of the Big Ten Network, and he's going to tell you both about the fantastic, incredible production capabilities of the Big Ten Network and how they engage audiences like you. And they're not exactly always on the same platforms. Mark, thank you. Thank you. Oh, Hello. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dim your lights now. All right. So I don't have to come up and interrupt you early, later. Uh, there we go. Okay. Wow, ambiance. This is great. This is great. It is really nice to be here in Lincoln. Um, as Gary said, my name is Mark Halsey, and I'm the executive producer of the Big Ten Network. And what does that title mean? That title means I'm responsible for everything that's good on the BTN Network. If it's not good, it's not my responsibility. <laughs> But seriously, I am glad to be here today, especially glad that uh, BTN carried Nebraska's first win of the season last Saturday. How about that? How about that? So I'm very happy Scott Frost had a, a terrific win in the Huskers over Minnesota last week on BTN. And I'm pretty confident that Nebraska is going to have their second consecutive win this Saturday as we televise on BTN. And also we have BTN Volleyball coming up on Saturday as well, which is great. So, again, it's really great to be here. Um, I want to give you a quick overview of BTN before um, I get into the particulars on how we're changing the culture at BTN. And we're no longer just a linear TV network. We are a content company. And that's something that is, is an exciting evolution on BTN. We launched the network in September of 2007. And for those that remember when we launched BTN, it was controversial. You know, the, the games in the Big Ten used to be on ESPN and other platforms. And this was one of the first collegiate sports television networks. And it was not easy at the beginning. We had challenges in gaining distribution. And I'll talk about that through my presentation. That's the key to success in our industry is distribution. We need to get our content, which is very valuable, out to the largest number of people possible. And, and it's, it's been good. After the initial challenges in the first couple of years, the power of the Big Ten brand and the power of live sports. You'll hear me say this in the next half hour. Live sports is the best reality television going today. <laughs> you are not going to watch the Nebraska Bethune-Cookman game on tape on Monday. You want to watch it live. And that's the advantage that I think live sports have. Because right now in the traditional cable bundle, sports and news drive the engine. And that's something that I, I hope does not change, and I don't think it will, because live sports is the key to that success. So we're available on all the major cable and satellite distributors, including DirecTV, Comcast, Cox is a big distributor in the state of Nebraska. And also we're available on a lot of these OTT platforms. And that's a real growing trend. As people, as their viewer habits change, and they decide that they might not want to, to still have that cable bundle, they can go to the OTT platform and many still carry BTN and many still carry live sports. So that's an area that has grown tremendously over the past year. We're a network that's primarily fueled by the live events. We have a lot of them. We have 530 live events a year on BTN. We, we call the oxygen to our network the football and the basketball games. We have 44 football games and 187 basketball games on BTN throughout the year. But we have other sports that generate very high viewership. And you know, since I'm here in Lincoln, uh, volleyball is a huge sport for BTN. I know it's very popular in the state of Nebraska. Wrestling is very popular. We have wrestling and we have volleyball live events that outrate men's basketball from time to time. And it's growing and, and continuously being more popular. And I think, you know, the Big Ten's fortunate because volleyball and wrestling are very popular sports and they're very successful at it, which really helps. And then finally, this is the coolest thing. I've got a great job. Don't get me wrong. I love my job. The coolest part about the job are these 1,300 live stream events on BTN Plus. And the reason why is because every single one of those events is produced by students. They're produced by students at the University of Nebraska and all 14 of our member institutions. And it is the greatest thing ever to see all these people that have come through our doors in Chicago who have streamed these events since the network started, and now they're working at ESPN. They're working at Fox. They're working at the Big Ten Network, and they started at, at BTN working on these streamed events. 
We have a young lady that went to Rutgers who now is on the air at NBC Sports Philadelphia. She was the sideline reporter for soccer at Rutgers. She got her start. She cut her teeth. She learned how, to, how, how the right way to do it. And to me, it is, it's the greatest. And also what we do is we take the best and brightest from all of our 14 member institutions and we have a program called BTN Now. It's a network operations workshop. We bring them all to Chicago. We bring usually 15 to 20 people, all the great people that did all the hard work during the season. They get to live in Chicago in the summer, which is incredible. And they learn how to be a technician to do live events. They learn how to be a technical director, run audio, run camera. And our success rate is at about 75%. The people that go through the program, that come to Chicago, that learn how to do these live events, they are now working on a lot of the events that we cover. They're also full-time staff members at BTN. We also have full-time staff members that work at ESPN as well. So to me, I, of all the cool things I get to do at my job, that is one of the greatest to see these people come through the doors and become successes and get that first job out of college, which was, which is always the hardest job to get. So this is a mobile conference. So we embrace mobile and I am multitasking. I'm watching our network right now to make sure everything goes right while I give this presentation. And we were one of the first collegiate sports. In fact, we were the first collegiate sports network to understand that we have to go where you are. In fact, this is BTN student you right now. It's great timing. This is live. This is an event that was carried by students. So we understand that you might not be glued to your television 24 seven. You're out and about. We need to get, we need to bring the content where you are and we need to bring it to your phones. So we, we developed this app to BTN to go. We had 6 million downloads since the 2011 launch which is great. And it's a testament to the product. It's a testament to live events, which is the key to success. Um, and it's really been interesting to see how the viewership has changed since the launch in 2007. Now we're about 70% mobile. So the people that do view the content, if they're not in their homes, 70% are viewing. In fact, right now, this Indiana, Ohio State soccer game, uh, they're viewing it on their phones. So it's been really interesting to see how things have changed. Original programming. This has completely changed in the last several years at BTN. So how it would work before is our producers, in fact, I'm really proud of, of a show that we produce called The Journey. And it's our documentary style show. It, it's kind of hard, if, if anybody, and I'm, I'm sure primarily there are sports fans in the audience, there's a show on HBO called Hard Knocks, which is a great show that focuses on the NFL. We're hard knocks with cleaner language. <laughs> we focus on these stories, these tremendous stories, and I'm gonna share one here shortly from our student athletes. It's shot beautifully, it's a documentary style show, and here was the process and how this show was put on linear television. We would send a crew out to the respective stadium to shoot on Saturday. We would get that footage shipped back to Chicago, and we, we would have editors that would work 24-7 for three straight days, grinding away and getting that footage edited for a linear telecast that would debut on Wednesday. So then we realized that we have a tremendous amount of content that nobody ever sees. And also we have a tremendous amount of people watching on our phones and not really waiting necessarily for the linear debut. So we found a way to balance both, protect the linear viewership, but then get clips out online, distribute them through our BTN social platforms, and get that out on people's phones, and get, those, get this information out of people's tablets. So we have all this, all this footage that was on the cutting room floor that never aired. So what we do now is we get everything back, and we take the best footage that we can find quickly, and we produce a quick 30-second piece that's sent out on social on Mondays, and we call it Slow Mo Mondays. It's a very simple thing. Here's an example. So that's footage that people would see. That's
test footage that was sat in an editor's bay that didn't necessarily see the light of day. So now we do some on Mondays, we distribute that on social, help to promote the linear view on, on Wednesday. So the way we look at it, and this is the way we have to look at it now, every second of content that we produce is of ultimate value because it's live sports and it's the, it's the content people want to see. And especially in markets like Nebraska and Columbus, they just can't get enough of it. So what we do now when we produce these types of shows, we're looking to produce in small snippets. If we have a great story, for example, we were at um, last week, Purdue shocked Ohio State. It was a tremendous story. We got into the locker room for, for Coach Brahms' speech. It was unbelievable. And before, what we would do is we'd protect that footage. Now, we, no one can see this footage until it airs on linear. It just can't happen. That's completely changed now. We want to get that footage out as quick as possible. I'm going to show you some examples of how we treat our live events now where we get these clips and these highlights out immediately because we want to get that content out to people where they are. This is a story I want to share with you really quickly. It's really great. I mean, we get to tell so many great stories of these student athletes. Melvin Kane, and a tremendous story. He, um, he grew up in Liberia on the West African coast during the Liberian Civil War. Some of the most challenging conditions you could ever imagine to grow up in. So his father received a visa to go to the United States. And then Melvin then later received a visa to go to the US to fulfill his dream to be a student athlete and to go to college, which was amazing. His mother though stayed back in Liberia. So Melvin went 15 years without seeing his mom. So we talked to the folks at Maryland, they told us the story and we were like, we have got to tell the story. We've got to figure out a way to do this. But logistically getting a, a film crew to go to Liberia is not easy. So we met with Melvin, we went to College Park last year and we, we, we gave him a small camcorder and his phone. And we told him when you go back on your trip, create a video blog of your journey and then come back and we'll take a look at the footage and we'll get that out. This is amazing. So he, he goes on the trip, he sees his mother and right as he pulls up in, in, in Africa to, to go to see this moment, he hasn't seen his mom in 15 years, he gives a small camera to his uncle who runs behind. He's never run a camera in his life. He didn't even know how to do it. And we get this moment. So this moment, which was incredible to see this reunion, this piece of footage, again, in Chicago, nobody knew it was going to happen. Nobody had any idea that this shot was going to happen. So once we get everything back to Chicago, immediately on it, do we hold this footage? Do we wait to get this documentary out to the public on linear? Or do we get this clip posted immediately? So that completely changed the way we think of it. So this, this show, which was nominated for a national Emmy called The Reason I Play, our folks in Chicago did a great job with it. What we did is we created a digital documentary, a five-part series. Everybody, hundreds of thousands of people viewed this before the linear debut, but our linear viewership was higher than it was ever, ever would have been before because of the promotion that we got on social media, because everything that we showed during this event and just the logistics now when the network first started, the thought that we could shoot this on someone's phone or shoot it with a small camcorder was, was unheard of. We would, we would have to send a crew of 10 people back in 2007 to get this done. So again, embracing technology and, not, and understanding that linear is still important to us. Linear is still, we're still a linear cable television network, but we're a content company. And getting this content out as quickly as possible helps promote the linear when you're broadcast. It was a great moment. And it was, again, the, another great part about the job. There's just all these folks that you see playing and all these student athletes, everyone has a story. And it's, uh, it, was a, it was a great moment. One thing I wanted to show you that I thought was interesting is when we produce live events, we now produce with the phone in mind and things have dramatically changed. So in 2007, I'm sure everybody here watches sports and you cannot watch a sporting event today without that score bug on top of the screen, we call it the Fox box. So in 2007, we were one of the first HD networks to televise live sports. Can you imagine watching anything in SD anymore? I was in a hotel last week in Columbus and the Big Ten Network was in standard definition on the cable system. 
And I looked at that, I'm like, how in the world could you watch this? That was back in 2007. That wasn't that long ago. So now everything is in HD, which it should be. So in 2007, everything went border to border because we were shooting in 16 by nine for the first time. We were no longer in a four by three space. So then things changed. In 2009, we were like, okay, we need to give the picture back to the viewers. There's too much stuff on the, on, on the screen. We need to make it smaller. And then in 2011, we made it even smaller. We're like, no, people want to watch the games. They don't want to see graphics. And then everything has changed now because we need to produce not only for linear, we need to produce for this. So you need to be able to see the graphics. So look where we are today. Bigger, wider, bolder. So when you watch a game now and you want to know what is the score, like I can tell right now the score is one nothing in, in this particular soccer game. So it's that balance, but we can't disrupt the linear audience because right now that's still for live sports, the majority of the viewership, but we need to understand that so many more people are watching on mobile. It's carried on to other networks as well. Monday Night Football, NBA, everything is bigger so you can see it. And that's been a dramatic change in the way we produce live sports now of not only protecting linear, but understanding that people are watching on a lot of smaller devices as well. This is one of the coolest things that we do from a technological standpoint, automated highlights. So what, what we've done is we've partnered with a company called WSC Sports Technologies. And they have found a way to take the video feeds and create instant clips through augmented reality. And they have software that can listen to the tone of the play-by-play -play caller so when the play-by-play -play person calling a play and he gets excited, it immediately sends a signal out to make that clip. And any clip that we have on a, on a game is immediately sent out on social. So we have a team of editors, back before we partnered with S at WSC, they were physically making these clips and doing these ins and outs. So I'll show you this example here. So this is in an editor's workstation. This is a game between Michigan State and Penn State. And if you look over here to the top right, you'll see the clips are being generated automatically without anyone doing anything. Those clips then are processed and then pushed out immediately after the play. And it's amazing to me that also too, through, through WSC, it can, it can rate the plays. If it's a 50 yard touchdown pass, they might give that a five star rating and that'll be sent out and clipped. And immediately we can put it into our social platforms and get that out within minutes. Um, because again, our, our, our thought process has changed where again, the linear viewership right now is vital and people are watching games live, but if you don't see the game and you want to see the highlight, we're pushing that out as quickly as possible on all of our platforms, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. The other thing too, that we've created Facebook watch channels, which now they have exclusive five minute video recaps after every big 10 football game. So let's say if you missed the Nebraska win over Minnesota last week, unfortunately, if you missed it, but you wanted to see Scott Frost first win, you can go on Facebook watch on our Husker channel and you can get a five minute clip that had all the highlights, all the touchdowns, had the iconic moment at the end where they dumped the Gatorade bucket over Scott after he got his first win and that got out also. And we still have our linear highlight show, which primarily people watch after all the games as well. So this is, Again, it's great to see when you watch our team of editors and everything is being clipped in real time, we're pushing that content out as quickly as possible. Again, here's a screen grab of the, uh, the Facebook watch channels and they've been very, very successful. And as, as we get into conference play and more and more people watch these games, it's something that again, and we're creating these extra partnerships with these outside companies are able to process this and get this content pushed out as quickly as possible. This is another program that I think is, has been great for us, the MVP program. And it probably speaks to a lot of the students that are in attendance today. Of, and I'll, I'll I'm sure I look forward to taking questions at the end of the presentation on, you know, where, where are people hiring? You know, I get so many people, so many people to call and want to work at BTM. And I think it's great. And these are the kind of jobs that are being created and, and these are the kind of jobs that, that people are hiring for. So what this is, is we needed to find a way to create more school specific content on campus. We're based in Chicago. We're not on the ground in our 14 institutions. And what we did is we hired people that live on campus 
They live within the athletic departments and we are generating content daily on all of our campuses. Right now, Iowa, Michigan State, Minnesota, here at the University of Nebraska, Ohio State, Penn State, and Wisconsin. We have MVPEs located on site and they're generating content daily. And some of the numbers are, are pretty impressive. From August 23rd to th through September 29th, we've had over 500 posts and our video views, number of impressions are impressive. And again, they continue to grow. 57% of our content is with football, men's basketball, and then 43% of the content is with Olympic sports. So again, it's getting that content out. Here's an example of what some of that content is. So a lot of behind the scenes footage, a lot of content also that can be used on our linear shows as well. But what we found is, you know, you need to be on campus to generate our content. Or hope that we have representation on all of our 14 campuses um, soon so we can continue to, to drive this valuable content. Um, the other thing that we're experimenting with, which has been really fun, is uh, different cameras in our live events different cameras that can be streamed onto phones and onto tablets and to give you that true second screen experience. And I'm really lucky because we're partnered with Fox Sports. And from a technical standpoint, Fox Sports has always been the innovator. Their audio, if you listen to the World Series, the audio is better than anybody's. What they've done with NASCAR and the NFL, the, the Major League Baseball broadcasts, uh, Fox has been outstanding. So they push and we push all the time to continue to, to be different and continue to make that live event experience the best it can be. So we did this, we, we, we worked on this, we've done it a couple of times. In fact, Fox, for anybody to watch the Michigan Michigan State game last week on Fox Network, they put a camera, they call it hat cam, and put a camera on the umpire on the field during the game. They got some tremendous video, which was incredible. We did this um, for the Michigan State, Penn State game in Happy Valley, Michigan State upset Penn State in the final seconds. So we put a camera on the side judge and the line judge during the game. We brought that content back to Chicago, clipped it, sent it out immediately. And then eventually when the technology improves, we'll do a live stream of hat cams so people can watch simultaneously as a, a second screen experience. We got a couple of good pieces of video. So as the technology improves, we expect to do a, little, a lot of more, a lot more of that that type of thing. Because again, you know, four or five years ago, the thought of putting a camera on a cap during a live football game was unheard of. We continue to push it at the box, and you'll, you've watched the, what they do with embedded cameras. Um, those are things that we'll continue to do and continue to explore. So I know my time is thirty minutes. I want to take a lot of questions. I will tell you though, um, in, in closing. It is, there's never been a better time to be a consumer of live sports. You have so many options. There's never been a better time to be in this industry. I know it's changing, but I think now, considering the technology's improved, considering that at least I'm fortunate in my role overseeing live sports, I think it's never been popular. I think the ratings show it. I think the fact that we're, we're televising as many events as we are has been good for, 
for people. It's been good for the individual programs at each Big Ten school. Uh, it's an exciting time. I, I think that I tell our staff that if you don't enjoy change, it's probably not a great place to be because change happens a lot. I enjoy it because I think it's invigorating. And I think, again, uh, as a consumer, we're in a great spot. I mean, there's, there's so many different ways to enjoy our content, but we've figured out that you can enjoy the content here too. And that's something that we've embraced and hopefully we'll continue to do and be successful at it. So be happy to take any questions. Again, please come down to the microphone. We'll get the lights on here. And uh, get ready. All righty. Thanks. Who wants to be first? All right. Um, you said that you hope to do like the live streaming with the cameras, correct? Like in mm -hmm. hats and stuff. When they're not employees of yours, um, how will you handle like accountability and liability for like cursing or accidents or misplacement of your property? That was the main question asked to us when we decided to do hat cams. So the response was no audio. So we took the video and I honestly, I'm not sure if we'll ever be at the point where we'll carry a live audio feed. Because for anybody that's been on a football field or any playing surface, sometimes the language gets a little, little rough. Um, so we're sticking very, you must have been in our meeting. Because uh, we, we also talked to the conference. Before we get approval to do these kind of things, we want to make sure the Big Ten Conference is, is uh, comfortable with it. You know, we're not going to do anything that, unless they uh, have full approval. But that's how we got around this. We just went video only. Anything else? Uh, quick one for me. Uh, yes. It's a huge cultural change uh, moving to mobile. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you move an organization that is that did not grow up, you know, in mobile? How do you how do you move it to mobile? That's a good question. I'm really lucky that we have a lot of employees at Big, Big Ten who are mobile users and came from that and they're right out of college. I mean, we have a dynamic worse workforce. It's terrific. I, I have, I'm fortunate that I have my 15 year old son at home, which he, he, he's ahead of every trend and he helps me, but our staff helps me. And again, I, I think that's something our culture at BTN is a very fresh approach. And I think because we have so many recent college graduates that are in our workforce they understand where view, their viewers are. And I think it's been, it's been tremendous. And, and again, for us, we, we have to remain flexible. We have to understand that you can't be stuck in your ways. Um, and then in turn, we, we've had some employees that, you know, who came from, from networks, legacy networks, and it's been a little harder for them to change because they just don't understand that things are different. Um, I embrace change. And I think most of our staff has, has, and, you know, had, yeah, pushing to mobile and, and, and understanding that we produce our, our live content differently right now hasn't been as big a challenge as I thought it would be. I think it's primarily just because of the workforce that we have. It's been great. Hi. Um, where does sports media fall between like news and entertainment? And what do you learn from the news media and entertainment media? Well, I think from news, uh, I think a lot of it is now because of embracing technology to get the news out. Uh, I think we've learned from them in regards to that. We're a little bit different at BTN though. Um, we don't look at ourselves as a true news organization. We report stories, but we, are, we don't feel that people come to us for breaking news, for example. Uh, I will tell you, we've had some challenging stories to cover B at BTN since our network launched. Uh, the stories at Penn State, uh, the recent issues and challenges they've had at Ohio State, uh, the Maryland football program is currently undergoing some, some challenges and an investigation continues in regards to the culture of that program. Uh, we report the news, we just don't sensationalize it. We're a little bit different. So. Again, I think we're, we're a little bit different. We're primarily a live event network, and I think people come to us for the games. And I think they come to us for the studio shows around that. Um, from an entertainment standpoint, and we, you know, it, it's, again, we're, we are not looking necessarily to break news. 
Uh, we will be there. For example, if, if the Maryland story breaks here in the next couple of days, as far as what uh, will be the response from the university to the investigation, we will carry the press conference. We will have extended coverage. But if we are not there to be the first necessarily, because we don't think that's what people look at BTN to be. Uh, we know that if that Nebraska game Saturday, BTN is there for them. And that's what we're there for since we're primarily a live event network. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, so you're primarily a, a, a source of live events and news, and you've got that covered. Mm -hmm. Mobile then is your engagement? I would say yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I will tell you that as we go along, and you've seen this with other networks that are now producing various content solely on Instagram. Um, ESPN has been one that's had a lot of success producing Sports Center on, uh, on, in, on Snapchat. And, and it's been very, very popular and it's done very, very well. Um, I think for us, um, also too, you have to understand, you have to figure out where your resources are going to lie. We still have a lot of resources primarily based on focusing on the linear shows that we produce. But, but again, if we see a value to that and we see... Uh, an economic model that makes sense, we will produce content solely for mobile in the future if that makes sense for us. But right now, it's, it's, it's primarily the staff that we have, or at least the shows we're producing, primarily are focused on linear. I, if I were you, I think I'd start lining up for those internships. Uh, <laughs> let's thank Mark. Okay. Thank you. Our next session starts travel. I mean, it's scheduled to start at 1115. We're we may end up rolling a minute or two earlier, but I need to tell you it's a little going to be a little special because the uh, speaker for our next session, Emily Withrow, um, is home violently ill with salmonella. And uh, therefore, she's wisely not here. Um, Instead, her colleague at Quartz, who also creates bots and does uh, some great teaching and videos on how to create bots, will be coming to us via Zoom and we'll be watching him on the big screen. Um, he, is, he is also excellent, John Keith. He uh, is, is an excellent bot creator and he'll be telling us how to do that. So that will be on the screen. Uh, we're scheduled to go at 11.15 on that one, so don't be late. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Thank you.